Hello everyone. I am going to uh, give my detailed comments on a brilliant article by Esther Monzo Nibot. And the title of the article is Translation, Power, Ethics, Challenging Injustice in Cross-Cultural Understanding and Cooperation. This is a kind of a review article accounting the history of translation spanning eight years since World War, War I when it was brought home the significance of translation interpretation uh, of the languages of the other side, that is the languages of the enemies. Cultural translation is a process of self-transformation. That's what she begins her article with, a process of growth. But more than that, it is a challenge to be communicative to those who were not in the center of the discussion. Esther is aware of the fact that languages are hierarchically distributed with asymmetric relationships and crossing over from one language to another is not only challenging but also empowering because all translation involves certain kinds of manipulation of ideology, of knowledge, religious adhering and gender related values. She asked the readers to think about the question as how the translation and translation policies have reshaped the inequalities in the world. The reference of Tower of Babel is here in this article and the associated curse, uh, which I find little amusing because contrary to the myth of the Babel of languages, Indian gods and goddesses take various avatars to communicate and to converse in myriad languages and dialects, and especially the local dialects, to their devotees. The Indian mythology actually represents the multilinguality, in inclusive, which is inclusive of linguistic diversity. Esther raises the issue of multilingual language policy, and she also brings uh, our attention to the fact that there are many nations like Africa and others which take the multilingual language policy only in a namesake, however, use only one language predominantly, like in Africa, Arabic is used predominantly. And this is also true of many South Asian countries and Southeast Asian countries where multilingual language policies only is a kind of a banner rather than an applica in ap application. In a multilingual and plur plurilingual countries like India, which language to be adopted for translation out of 1,000 available languages is a very significant area to be considered seriously and which area of public consumption must be available through translation is all about power dynamics. If a large class of rural population is devoid of basic necessities because they could not fill in the application forms because of the translation was not possible, we are actually, we are instrumental in uh, letting the subaltern society vanish from this earth. In fact, this comes to be very starkingly evident in this pandemic when we are, or some of us has witnessed that the information about how to keep yourself safe is not transmitted through translation in the local languages. I am happy to see that the author brings in the discussion on many language ideologies such as standard language ideology, dominant language ideology, ratio-linguistic language ideology, also called ableism, that have been instrumental in linguicism as Kutnab Kangas have been writing about and denial of social justice. What catches the attention in the article is the difference she creates between engaged translation and impartial translation and promoting the former. However, I would like to bring uh, to the attention of the readers that engaged translation can also be very partial with a specific political and religious goal to achieve. It cannot be ignored that the prime goal of SIL had been the religious conversion and thus belittling the indigenous cultures and ethics. Linguistically, translating across cultures is, is, is incredibly challenging, as you all know, as it is symmetric and evokes exploration of parallels of notions and mapping of appropriate words.
in the target language. One significant fact that paper leaves unstated is that how oral tradition is to be translated, especially in written formats of any language. India, with more than 800 unwritten languages and their users, must be accessed by translating written languages into their local languages, which are not written down, so that the information structure or social justice and health services are available to the subalterns. Translation across cultures bridges gaps between informed and the non-informed. And to conclude, I would say that I strongly believe that to mitigate the effects of linguistic apartheid, we need translation across cultures. Thank you.